Okay, now that we have our bellows removed from the Whistler body, we're ready to begin the restoration of the bellows itself. The bellows are covered with a very thin membrane type material called zephyr skin. And the zephyr skin has little paper cutouts glued to it that act as sidewall stiffeners to maintain the shape of the bellows as they open and close, expand and contract. It's important that we re when we remove the zephyr skin that we preserve the integrity of the paper cutouts so that we may later reuse them or at least use them for patterns to fabricate new cutouts. When we cut away the paper skin it's important that we keep our knife blade angled inward That way we will preserve and protect anything that may be inside, such as the valves that we will be also replacing. Here is what the bellows looks like inside after we removed one section of the skin. And what we'll see is a little flap of zephyr skin that covers a little paper flapping valve. I make new valves out of a silicone type material and we'll show you that in the later part of this segment. So this is what the bellows assembly looks like after it's been stripped of all the zephyr skin with its paper cutouts. And this is the type of debris that we can expect to find. It's very important that when we strip the bellows that we be very careful as to not damage the wooden body. We don't want to sliver it up or, or gouge it or scrape it. The wood must remain pristine and as smooth as possible. What we also found when we opened this bellows up is that the leather hinge that supports the middle part of the primary bellows had deteriorated and so we will be replacing that as well. This leather hinge is made of a very thin leather which can be difficult to source. It's often referred to as skived leather. So here we have the bellows body ready for replacing the valves and what I'd like to show you here is that this is what the original paper valve looks like. It basically covers the, the valve port which is simply a hole and it's glued at the little tab to the wooden body. So what I like to do is I make new valves. I'll put down a little piece of wood and some parchment paper and then I use this silicone type material that I make up in very thin sheets. I make this out of a two-part molding silicone and then I use a little brass tube that I sharpen at one end to punch out holes out of this thin membrane that I make out of silicone. So here we have a little disc that I punched out and I simply lay that over the valve port in the position that I'd like it to be in. Center it carefully over the port. You want it centered as best as possible. And I put a tiny little droplet of hide glue right on the center of this piece of silicone. I'll 
this one actually ended up being probably too large of a droplet and I, I actually redid this valve after this video was taken. I also put some high glue on the edges of the wooden body of the bellows. and carefully position a little piece of zephyr skin over the top of my new silicone valve and then it also gets adhered to the edges of the body. What this does is it holds the little silicone disc in position and keeps it nice and flat against the wooden body. It actually acts as a bit of a spring to keep the, the valve closed when we want it closed. Let it dry and then we'll do three other valves. There's four valves internal total 